mobile chat client GPT just broke into the top of the App Store. Apple itself insisted on banning the use of GPT chat. Startup Sengchor introduced a robotic humanoid named Phoenix. The Rimac Never a Hypercar set a new record for acceleration to 100 in 1.74 seconds. NASA also set a new record for the speed of data transfer from space. SpaceX is ready for another launch as early as June 15th. All this and more right now, let's go. Canadian startup Century decided to compete with the famous Tesla Optimus robot by presenting its own humanoid machine called Phoenix. According to the developers, it is the world's first general-purpose humanoid robot controlled by artificial intelligence. At a height of 170 centimeters, the robot weighs about 70 kilograms. The company pays special attention to the created arms, which are a kind of work of art. They have more than 20 degrees of freedom, have haptic sensation replacing touch, and can lift a weight of up to 25 kilograms. Unlike Tesla's Optimus, Phoenix has not yet learned to walk. There is a design to move on two legs, but at the moment, the Canadian robot is mounted on a wheeled platform, allowing it to move at a speed of 4.8 kilometers per hour. The developers face a choice, either license the walking algorithm from a third-party company or use an open source project. Artificial intelligence algorithms are trained using telepresence technology. The process is as follows. The operator wears a virtual reality helmet, which allows him to see what the robot sees. The machine repeats the operator's movements and the neural network analyzes and learns what it sees. The pilot project includes 110 tasks, including product labeling, packaging, warehousing, and others. The software platform is called Carbon, and uses popular language models. This suggests that the robot can be controlled using ordinary human language. The Rimac Nevera two-seat four-engine electric car, which already showed impressive results last year, this time decided to remove all doubts by setting 23 records in one day. Croatian company Rimac Automobili has been developing electric hypercars since 2009. The first Concept One model was introduced in 2016 and was one of the fastest for its time, Although it was only produced in eight copies, two years later, the concept model Nevera was introduced, which evolved into a series production. The Rimac Nevera is a two-seat electric hypercar with four motors and 1,914 horsepower. It has a top speed of 415 kilometers per hour and accelerates to 100 kilometers per hour in less than two seconds. The company plans to produce 150 of these cars at a price of 2.4 million S dollar heading to the Poppenberg track in Germany. The RIMAC team conducted 23 separate runs, the results of each of which were confirmed by independent observers. For starters, the hypercar accelerated to 400 kilometers per hour in 21.31 seconds. According to the head of the company, it is faster than the McLaren racing car, which reaches 350 kilometers per hour. Then the electric car broke records for the quarter mile race, the race with a fixed start, the braking distance from 100 to 0 kilometers per hour, and many others. In addition, the Nevera improved its own record for acceleration to 100 kilometers per hour, reaching it in 1.74 seconds instead of the previous 1.85 seconds. OpenAI has announced the release of the ChatGPT client for the iPhone, and just hours after publication, the app ranked number one in the productivity category of the App Store. The OpenAI GPT app is currently only available in the U.S., but will be available in a number of other countries in the coming weeks. It offers the same basic functionality as the web version. Ask questions, save chats, activate the dark interface, and use and pay for subscriptions directly in the app. However, there is a difference. The iPhone client supports voice input using the Whisper service, also developed by OpenAI. An Android version will be presented later, but exact dates are not mentioned by the developers. By the way, Apple itself has banned employees from using ChatGPT in internal memos. Apple says employees are not allowed to use ChatGPT for work because the company is concerned that these platforms collect sensitive data from employees. In addition, Apple has also banned employees from using Microsoft's Copilot GitHub. With Copilot, developers can automate code writing. ChatGPT is also supported by Microsoft, and data is sent to developers so they can continue to improve the artificial intelligence models used by the platform. Apple has suddenly unveiled its new Beats Studio Buds Plus headphones. 
What is even more surprising, however, is that their design looks like a copy of another popular brand. If anyone is familiar with the brand's previous model of Studio Buds headphones, the new headphones will look very familiar. They look pretty much the same on the outside, but when you open them up on the inside, you can see that 95% of the parts are brand new. For example, the microphones have tripled in size to better pick up the user's voice. Noise cancellation has also been improved. The new headphones are available in three colors, black with gold inlays, beige, and transparent. The last option is very reminiscent of the headphones introduced back in 2021. Among the interesting features of the novelty can be noted autonomy on a single charge. The headphones can work up to nine hours. If you use them in conjunction with the charging case, the total duration of operation will be up to 36 hours. The cost of the device is $169. NASA has set a new record for data transfer rates from space. NASA and partners have achieved a throughput of 200 GBPs on the downlink from the satellite to Earth. That figure is 400 times faster than the best starling rate of 500 megabits per second. The communications satellite, the size of a shoebox and weighing 11 kilograms, consists of three components. A high-frequency optical modem, a large high-speed storage device, and an optical signal amplifier. The device is relatively inexpensive and easy to manufacture. The T-Bird system, a QZ of this type, is ideal for testing new communications technologies because of its cost-effectiveness and small size. This system has surpassed the previous milestone of 100 GBPs reached in June 2022. The high speed is achieved due to the shorter wavelength of the laser beam compared to the radio signal. But the beam needs to be precisely directed to the receiver and the weather must be cloudless. Thanks to fast connectivity, the T-Bird can send several terabytes of test data to the ground in a single six minute pass over the ground station. One terabyte is equivalent to about 500 high-definition videos. To simplify the design of the laser transmitter, the developers did away with the individual system of pointing the laser beam at the ground receiver. The system is by thruster engines. In addition, data transfer protocols had to be upgraded. In case of a transmission error, only the block with the error is retransmitted. This allows not to load the channel with unnecessary repetitions and also increases the overall transmission speed. Joining NASA on the project are MIT's Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington, where the payload was assembled. Terrain Orbital, which developed the satellite chassis and the satellite itself, and the ground station at NASA's Optical Communications Test Laboratory and Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Samsung has released a short video dedicated to the company's service in case of Galaxy smartphones failure. It shows the whole process. From the transfer of a broken device for repair to its return to the owner, the equipment used, and other nuances that users often do not think about. After receiving a broken gadget, Samsung specialists make its diagnosis based on the complaint of the owner. Once the problem is confirmed, the device is transferred to another specialist for disassembly and replacement of broken or non-working components. For this purpose, specialized equipment designed specifically for Galaxy devices is used. After that, the smartphone is assembled and subjected to numerous tests, including checking the screen, camera, operation of mobile networks, water protection, etc. As a result, the user receives a device that is close to the factory condition. As for the mobile service centers, they are vans, inside which is equipped with a real workshop, where there is everything you need to perform repairs. SpaceX has applied to the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, for permission to launch Starship anytime between June 15th and December 15th. According to the FCC application, the mission will include a launch of Starship along with the Super Heavy booster. The launch will take place in Boca Chica, Texas. After separation of the spacecraft, the Super Heavy booster must travel part of the way back to the launch pad and return to the Gulf of Mexico 495 seconds after liftoff. The upper stage will enter orbit and land in the Pacific Ocean, northwest of Hawaii's Kauai Island, about 90 minutes after launch. The exact launch date is not yet known because it requires approval from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, which is still finalizing the damage assessment from the first failed launch. The final document has not yet been released. 
The FCC statement indicates that SpaceX plans to perform a targeted landing with the engine running, but does not specify a specific location. General Musk explained in his tweet that the company plans to make a soft landing in the ocean for both the launch vehicle and the spacecraft itself. However, so far there is no platform capable of accepting the landing of such large structures. Thank you.